Hey there everyone, welcome to Violet's Dream Tarot. So today we're doing a reading that's a little bit different. I know I seem like I say this a lot, um, but a few people have been asking recently for a reading that's about friendship rather than love or work or anything like that. So this question is going to be, is this person a true friend? So is this person someone you can trust? Do they have your best interests at heart, etc.? Um, we'll just be looking at any issues that might be in the friendship or maybe how this person sees your relationship. Um, I do want to point out that this is, of course, a general reading on YouTube. It's not a private reading. So if at any point you feel like it's just not describing your situation or the pile you chose just doesn't seem to describe the person that you're asking about, then feel free to stick around and listen to the, the reading still if you want to, because there might just be a message there for you that just seems to really resonate or feel free to choose another pile. Um, if you just really feel like you're not getting any answers that seem to resonate with you, that's completely fine. And as always, I wanna say a big, big thank you to everyone who has donated and to all of my patrons, including Alex, Alexandra, Kat, Ashley, Chris, and Kelly. Thank you so much for all of your support and your kindness. It really does mean a lot to me. So I'm gonna show you the piles up close again we've gone for these cute little landscape cards on the piles because you guys seem to like those so over on pile one today we've got this kind of lighthouse nighttime lighthouse image with the halloween tarot so just think about a particular friend or someone that you're not really sure where you stand in your friendship with them and you know just ask is this person a true friend what's our connection like from their side, etc. So pile two has this girl walking through grass that has these stars in it, and we're using the fairy tarot for that reading. And then pile three has, again, stars, but it's this time it's in a forest, and we're using the happy tarot for that reading. So whichever pile or piles you're being most intuitively drawn to um, is going to be the most accurate for you. I would say choose from your intuition rather than just the pile that you like the look of the most or the deck that you prefer. Choose the one that you're feeling most drawn to intuitively and that will most likely give you the more accurate reading. Um, and when you're ready, I'm going to start with pile number one. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time or go back to the start if you want to look at them again. Um, and yeah, I'm going to get started now. Okay, group one, if you chose this lovely lighthouse scene and the Halloween tarot, then this is going to be your reading. So let's see if this person is a good friend to you. You know, I think maybe some of you are going to be asking this question because you're having doubts. You're not sure whether this person is really a friendship that you should continue with. Maybe they were fine to begin with and then things just seem to have changed as you both um, you know, maybe become different people with time, or maybe they've just acted in a way that seems out of character, or you might just be looking for reassurance or, you know, curiosity about a particular person. So let's see what I'm getting for group one. Group one, we've got the lovers, first of all, which is interesting as your first card and then followed very quickly by the devil. Then we've got king of pumpkins or king of pentacles. Two of imps, the two of wands. And wheel of fortune. Okay, interesting. So I'm seeing Gemini, Taurus, Virgo, and especially Capricorn coming out in this reading. And what I want to point out straight away is that I think you were definitely meant to meet this person in this lifetime. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if this person was a soulmate for you or even like a twin flame character for you because I really do feel that there is a strong connection here and that you were meant to meet up to learn things from one another or to be there to support one another um, during a difficult time. I definitely get this sense that the two of you are almost like siblings. Like there is this really strong similarity, even if you don't like the same things or you don't have a lot of similar interests, there is still this really strong similarity. So you might have the same sense of humor or the same 
taste in fashion or something, something that really binds you closely together, um, despite any other differences that you might have. And I'm definitely feeling like sometimes this can seem like a bit of a love-hate relationship, and that was why I kind of said sibling at first, because it feels as though the two of you go through times where you're like intensely close, and then you have like massive fallings out, whether that's because of an argument or because one of you just feels like the other person isn't putting in enough effort or feels like the other person has been mean to them or something. It just seems to go through these like swings of very different opposite feelings. Um, but there's definitely this very strong connection here. And this is possibly a relationship that could be in your life for quite some time. I do get the sense that this person wants you to stick around in their life. So I'm super interested to see what the oracle cards will say and then we'll look at your charms and dice as we always do group one so make sure you stay and get your full reading. Gossamer Princess number 12 communication, relationship, work to be done. Yeah, and that was kind of what I felt earlier when I said that you might not argue, but you can still have fallings out with each other. And I think it all comes down to communication. Like one of you feels as though the other person hasn't been there for them or that the other person, you know, was mean to them in some way or rude to them or whatever. And they just take offense rather than talking about it. Um, so I would definitely recommend better communication in this relationship, being more honest rather than sulking or flying off the handle or expecting the other person to know what they've done wrong without you telling them and I think it would be the same advice that I would give to them as well like I feel you're both kind of equal in that sense Feather, number 26, think first before you judge yeah and again this comes down to like the whole intense relationship thing and the fact that communication isn't always the best in this relationship I really do get the sense that sometimes even though you care about each other a lot there can be a kind of competitiveness going on here I get the sense that sometimes one of you will say something to make the other person jealous or to make them feel like you're better than them in some way or they'll do the same thing to you and it's like rather than lifting each other up you're kind of pushing each other down because you feel like they deserve it or you feel like they need some payback for not being around for you at a certain time i wouldn't be surprised if some of you have crushes on this person or vice versa just because like i said it seems to be a very intense relationship sometimes um, there seems to be some things that are unspoken like not being spoken about in this relationship Stag spirit number 58 take the lead and so I would say that that's talking about taking the lead not in the sense of trying to like control the relationship or swerve it in the sense that makes that makes sense to you you know I, I don't think that that's saying that you should try and be in control of the relationship what I think it means is take the lead in the sense of start opening a conversation if you feel like there's some something that needs to be cleared up or be the first person to apologize if there's been a disagreement or an argument, etc. Like kind of take the lead in the sense of being the role model, like setting the precedent for what should happen in this relationship. Because I do think the two of you sometimes mirror each other in your behaviors or in your feelings. So if you do this, then I feel like the other person might kind of get the hint or might start even subconsciously following what you're doing. Then we have scrying mirror, shadow, and exactly, I do feel like um, the two of you have kind of held up a mirror to one another's shadow sides. I think that part of the reason why you came together in this lifetime was because you've both shown each other what your insecurities are, or you've both shown each other what the more negative aspects of yourself are and what you should work on there. Because like I said, I do feel it gets quite competitive sometimes. So working on the shadow self without being afraid of it is quite important. One Ring Circus, number 15. Okay, so that's about being more independent, which is interesting. I wonder if maybe there is 
Um, for some of you, a bit of an unhealthy relationship pattern here, like maybe the two of you have become codependent in a way because you can't not tell the other person something that happens or you can't do something without their advice or, you know, at least talking to them about it. Or you just seem to be subconsciously influenced by each other in a way. So I think that's interesting, uh, maybe to analyse the dynamic of the relationship a little bit more. Because I am seeing a few tendencies that might be unhealthy here. And that's not to pass judgement or anything, because there's never any judgement in my readings. Um, but I am seeing possible, like, just from the intensity of the relationship, it feels like there can be competitiveness. Or there can be kind of codependent behaviours going on in this relationship. So if that sounds like it's something that you're familiar with, then just take note of that. Second chakra, Archangel Ariel, number 36. Okay, so that is about um, letting people in, sacral chakra. And again, I feel like it's saying that some of you are attracted to this person or there has been even a fling with this person in the past or they're attracted to you and you kind of sense it, but it's never been spoken about. It feels as well like sometimes this person is the only person that you let in. So like possibly you've put previous chances to be in a romantic relationship on the back burner because that person said, oh, they're not the right one for you. You know, you shouldn't hang around with them, etc. Or you chose to be there for this friend rather than a romantic partner, which puts strain on that relationship. And that's just what I'm sensing. And I'm not saying that either was the right or wrong decision, um, but it feels like this person is kind of the first one you go to or the first person you run to um, whenever you're struggling and vice versa for you, I think. Okay, so then your archetype card is Gambler, light attribute, willingness to follow intuition even when others doubt you, shadow attribute, relying on luck rather than hard work. So that could... Um, that could describe this person that you're dealing with. And then we also have child eternal. Light attributes, determination to remain young in body, mind and spirit, ability to see things with fresh eyes. Shadow attributes, inability to grow up and be responsible, extreme dependency on others for physical security. So you might recognize some of those traits or, you know, it might just be from one card or it might be from both in either yourself or this person or the way that your relationship plays out with one another. So I'll just get you a couple more cards and then we'll do your charms and dice group one. Okay, so you've got number 47, Höheres Bewusstsein, Higher Self or Higher Consciousness. So like I said, I do feel that you were brought together to know this person for a reason and I do feel like you've learned a lot from this relationship. and. I don't think that any toxicity or any kind of negative or codependent behaviors from this person's side are coming from a place of trying to hurt you or anything. I genuinely think this person really cares about you. I think that you have a good, strong, solid base with this person. But I think for whatever reason, you can just sometimes slip into behaviors that are unhealthy or just not the right behaviors with this person that leads to arguments, etc., or disagreements. But I do feel like this person really cares and like they really value you as a friend and as someone to turn to and as someone who is caring and supportive. Imagine, number 20. Interesting. So with these two cards together, I kind of get the sense that you know what this person would say without asking them or you just have this really strong connection like mentally. Um that they can already kind of guess how you're feeling or, you know, you know what they would tell you to do in a certain situation. Um, so I think that's quite interesting. As I said, a really strong bond between the two of you. So let's get your charms on top and then we'll do your dice. But just a quick disclaimer, if you don't like the sound of the charms being shuffled or if you have really high volume, um, you might just want to turn it down while I shuffle them because they can be a little bit loud sometimes and I know not everyone likes the sound of it. So group one, is this person a true friend for you?
Okay, so let's just see initials first of all. We've got H there, and we've got L, and Q. So that could be first name or surname of this person. It could be places that remind you of them. Um, it could even just be a word that comes to your mind. It's fine. Um, I am seeing one, two, three starfish. And starfish for me are symbols of healing. Um, so I do think this person has helped you to heal a lot. I'm seeing the inner child trauma charm there. So I think this person has helped you to overcome things from your past. Some of you, you've known this person since you were children. Um, and so they've always been there for you to help you and to kind of lift you up. I'm just seeing another letter there as well. You've got J. So J, Q, L, and H. Then we have the downturned horseshoe. So that's a symbol of bad luck or going through a difficult time. And like I said, I think this person has helped you um, through those experiences, they've helped you to feel better about yourself when you've just felt like you have very low self-esteem or when you just feel like you can't do something. This person is there to help lift you up. This person's there to listen. But they have hurt you in the past as well because I'm seeing that wasp um, charm there and also the worry thread. And to be honest, I feel like this might be a little bit mutual. I feel like maybe they have hurt you by not being there for you in the past, but equally you've hurt them by being closer to a romantic partner than to them or choosing someone else over them sometimes. Like that's the kind of energy that I'm getting is that you've both whether reasonable or not reasonable, have been upset with one another or have felt hurt by the other person um, for different reasons. Some of you may be born in the year of the dragon, um, but if that doesn't resonate for your relationship, it's just saying that this is a very important relationship in your life. It's something that's very significant. And I get the sense as well that this person is quite unique. For whatever reason, you feel as though if you were to stop being friends with them, then you would never find anyone quite like them again because they're just so special. Whether that's special just to you or because of their personality or their outlook, I'm not sure, but that's just that little energy that I get there. They've brought you hope in difficult times. And I definitely feel like some of you, there have been poor mental health issues or there have been situations where this person has literally been the only person that you've let in or the only person that you've really talked about how you're feeling to. And so you've trusted them. But at the same time, I think that you've been left feeling a little bit lonely in this relationship sometimes, especially when it becomes competitive or when um, there's been disagreements or fallings out, like you felt lonely in the relationship but this person does care about you this tiny little charm says made with love it's really hard to read on a camera but that's what it says and then equally we have the locked heart chakra the blocked heart so like i said this person may have whether consciously or subconsciously gotten in the way of your relationships with some other people you might have kissed this person in the past or there has been that little crush um, on this person or for them on you we've got the movie camera there as well now normally this to me is about things happening behind the scenes that you're not aware of and I take it to mean like you know you're hoping that things will improve and you can't see it happening yet but it is going to happen you know the circumstances are just are just um, determining themselves but I don't think that's what it is here I think it's actually that this person holds back what they're feeling from you sometimes and even though they seem to be really open with you there may be this crush situation or there may be resentment that's being hold, held on to by this person and they just don't want to tell you because they don't want to ruin the relationship and then this little charm as well I definitely think that this person cares about you and that you make each other happy um, aside from the times when you might fall out or when there might be disagreements there is a lot of happy memories for this relationship so let's get your dice on top. Okay, number three. So that is the mystery dice. These ones. And I'm rolling four of them for you today, group one. This has been a really interesting reading, actually. 
like it seems really specific I didn't expect it to get so kind of detailed about the relationship okay group one Okay, so definitely partners in crime. You know, like I said, I really feel like this has been, for many of you, a long-term relationship. Like you've known them since you were children or you've known them a very long time. I think as well for many of you that this person just seems to be right for you in some ways. Even if you're very different, like there is something that really connects you that you are really similar in. And I think sometimes this person's guilty of kind of overanalyzing your relationship as well because there are things going on that you're not aware of. As I've said before, when I get this, I kind of think tip of the iceberg is all that's visible. You know, we're just seeing these tentacles and not the actual monster. So I wouldn't be surprised if this person is kind of holding back from speaking to you about something or confessing feelings or, you know, if they still haven't fully forgiven you for something that happened in the past, like I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. And then we have the trap door here, the person who's falling through the trap door. And I think that this really kind of encompasses the way that this person thinks, because it's landed on that card about relationship work needing to be done and communication needing to be improved. And I think they worry that if they properly talk about how they're feeling because let me get this straight I don't think this person is cagey at all I think that they talk to you a lot about their feelings like you know if someone's upset them I think they'll come to you and they'll tell you etc um, and they'll look to you for support and for advice as to what to do but I think when it comes to your relationship with this person that's when they don't talk as much um, and I think it's because they're worried that if they did open up or if they did start talking about feelings then things would go wrong and you would take offense or they just wouldn't be able to take back what they'd said. You know, if they come out and say, look, I still haven't really gotten over when this happened, then they would be afraid that it would have a negative effect on your relationship. Or if they came out and said to you, look, I've always had feelings for you, then, you know, they're worried that that would really negatively affect the relationship. So just take that how it resonates with you and with this person. Um, but I do genuinely feel like they catastrophize things in their minds and it stops them from speaking out. So that's what I get about your relationship with this person, group one. I really hope you enjoyed this reading. Please do like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and comment below. Let me know how it resonated. I love reading your, your comments. I do try to reply to all of you as well. And all of those little things that you do really help my videos get seen by more people. So they help out the channel um, as well, which is lovely. If you'd like to support me in another way, I have loads of links in the description box to help you do that. You can go and follow me on Instagram or Billy Billy if you want to do that. Um, I've also got my Patreon page where you can become a patron and get ex exclusive content over there and also get to know me a bit better and also some monthly rewards as well um, based on what tier you join at. I have a PayPal link for tips and donations to help me keep making these videos. I also have um, an Amazon wish list for new tarot and oracle decks. So if you're feeling really generous, you'd like to get a new deck for the channel, definitely go and check that out. Um, I've got quite a few different kinds of decks on there. So there's probably something that would interest you. And I'm still offering angel healing sessions on Etsy if that interests any of you. Definitely go and check it out if it does. And just I wish you all the best with this relationship and with anything else that's going on for you right now. Have a lovely rest of your day, Group 1, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care. Hi there, Group 2. If you chose the girl walking through the grass field with all of these stars, then this is your reading. Um, so let's take a look at what the tarot cards have to say. I was quite surprised actually by group one because it was a really specific reading and I don't know what I was expecting from this reading but I don't think I was expecting it to be so specific. So I'm curious to see if your reading will be like that as well. So group two. Okay, so we've got lots of tarot cards there. Let's see what they have to say. We've got the Ace of Bells, first of all, which is the Ace of Pentacles. And then the King of Bells. Okay, so two Pentacles cards. 
Then we've got 10 of hearts or 10 of cups. Two of hearts. The star. And 10 of leaves, which is the 10 of swords. Wow, okay, interesting. So two tens and an ace as well. <laughs> Okay, so I'm seeing Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and Aquarius coming through for this reading. All I have to say really is that this relationship seems to be one of ups and downs, or it's been a relationship that has gone really, really well for a very long time, and then suddenly things have changed. So you may no longer be in contact with this person, or you may have recently had a disagreement with them or an argument, or you just feel like recently they've just changed as a person. Um, cause that's what I'm getting from this is that there's this really close connection between the two of you. And I feel like you've known one another quite a long time. Um, and then suddenly things just change and you just don't understand why. So I'm curious as to what the Oracle cards have to say, cause it feels as though the two of you have a really strong connection going on. Like it seems like there's a lot of care between the two of you. Like you both really care about each other as people, um, I think you've been there for one another in difficult times. You don't seem to be afraid of telling this person how you feel. Like I think there's been a lot of communication in the past between the two of you where one of you has been upset, not necessarily about your relationship with each other, but I think that this person hasn't held back their feelings and that you haven't either. You know, there seems to be a lot of healthy communication going on and then things have possibly just changed for you recently. Okay, number 31, beauty and the beast, unconditional love. Okay, that's a nice message, especially if you have had this falling out or, you know, you've kind of pulled back from this person subconsciously a little bit. This person does truly care about you. And I think this is one of those relationships which may well last a lifetime or a very long time. Sometimes we're friends with people just because they live near us or we work with them or study with them. Sometimes we're friends with people for a particular period of our lives and then, you know, we go our separate ways because we've learned what we need to learn from each other. But I think this is possibly one of those relationships that could last a very long time. I do get the sense, though, that the two of you are quite different from one another, that the two of you aren't necessarily like the most likely of friends, if you see what I mean. You might come from very different backgrounds or you might have very different tastes in things, like very opposite tastes in music, for example, or very different sense of humor. Um, so that's quite interesting that you've got that. I just dropped one of my cards on the floor, but let's see what else the Oracle cards will say. Thorns, number 14, weave together the crown you deserve. Okay, that's interesting. I want to actually read from the guidebook there because I feel like that's going to have a message for some of you. Okay, this right here is the ultimate card of celebration. Not just of yourself, you're amazing though, but of those around you. When you're done putting on your crown each and every morning, go and help someone else put on theirs. You have so much love and wisdom to spread, so don't waste it. Self-love is essential, but community is important too. Okay, interesting. So yeah, I really feel as though you've helped one another through those tough times, and I feel like one of you is possibly a bit insecure, and I'm wondering if that is to do with body issues. Um, that's what's coming up for me, like weight issues or height issues as well as coming up like you might be really tall and the other person is really small or the other way around. And, you know, one of you is insecure about your height, but the other person has helped to lift them up and to make them feel better about themselves and all of this. Fox Spirit, number 27, think on your feet. Yeah, it does seem like this person's changed quite suddenly or their their behavior towards you has changed. I'm wondering as well if this person maybe has um, a fire sign in their chart quite prominently, like Aries, 
Leo Sagittarius. Just because they seem to be like someone who is very able to just snap, you know, just quite suddenly they just snap. That's just this energy that I get is that you can be there for them for ages and love them and all of that. And then suddenly you can say something that they take the wrong way and then they just suddenly change. Um, that's just the energy that I get for some of you. Book of Shadows, Secret. That's interesting. So maybe that's the reason why there's been a change. Maybe you kept a secret from them or they've just got something that they're not ready to tell you yet. Um, maybe they feel as though you were gossiping about them or that you told someone something about them and that's not the case, but that's what they think anyway. There's like an issue here about confidences and betrayal of confidences. Dragon's Lair, number 19. That's a nice card because that's saying that this tough time that you're going through or the difficult times that are ahead is something that you're going to be able to cope with and you're going to be able to come out of that um, stronger and better than ever. So if you are having this difficulty with a friend, I don't think it's going to last forever. Like I said, I think this is a relationship that has long-term potential. So that's a good sign. appreciation number 15 definitely if they have stopped talking to you or if they have just not been putting in the effort with you I think they're going to realize soon enough that they are lucky to have you as a friend and that you are someone who's always been there for them or who they've always been able to count on so yeah I really do feel that they're going to realize quite soon you know that you're the one that has always been kind to them or that you've always been such a good friend to them so why should they fall out with you over something small you know that's good they definitely appreciate you as a person even when they aren't ready yet to talk to you okay and then we've got two archetype cards to describe this person so number one is storyteller. Light attribute is ability to experience and express life through stories and symbols. Shadow attribute is making up tales that harm others. And it's interesting as well because I was talking about with the secret card that maybe things have been said that weren't true about the other person um, or that they have kind of made up this narrative in their mind where they think that you've gone saying something about them to someone else but actually it wasn't you and they've just decided it was you so it's interesting that that's come out and then equally as interesting based on what i said earlier is this card shapeshifter light attributes is skill at navigating through difficult sorry not difficult through different levels of consciousness ability to see the potential in everything and shadow attribute is projecting any image that serves your personal agenda in the moment. So like I said, someone who can just change very quickly or very suddenly based on what's in front of them or based on how they're feeling at the time. So all of those attributes might resonate with this person, it might just be something from one card or you know, two bits from both, it doesn't matter. Those are just what came through about this person. So let's just get you a couple more cards and then we'll do your charms and dice, group two. Yeah, number 24, Sinnlosigkeit, senselessness or meaninglessness. This person seems to behave sometimes in a way that you just don't understand. And I think it stems from their own insecurities. I think this person feels like they always need to prove themselves to people in order to be accepted. Like they always seem to want people to have their attention on them all the time or to people thinking about them really positively all the time or they want to hear people say oh you're such a great person because they need to hear that to validate themselves so I don't think this person's behavior is anything to do with you honestly I think it stems from something that's on the inside of them And then we have number five, orphaned. Yeah, so I really do feel if this person has left you or 
said some things that they can't take back that they're going to really regret it. And I do think that this person is going to try and come back into your life or you're going to get over this difficult time. If that is what you're going through, I realize not everyone will be, um, but it is just coming up as a theme for a lot of you. Then I feel like this relationship is going to get back on track. I do think this is someone who is likely to be in your life for a long time just because they realize that other people aren't there for them in the way that you are and other people aren't as good a friend to them as you are and so for that reason they really cherish and appreciate you and like I said I think you've you've had this person in your life for a long time whether or not you've been good friends for all of that time um, and so yeah they they really do care about you there's a lot of shared history there so let's get your charms on top and see what they can tell us and then we'll do your dice but just before I start shuffling, I just want to remind you, if you don't like the sound of the charms or if you have the volume turned up really loud, you might just want to turn it down while I shuffle them because um, I know not all of you like that sound and for some of you it can be really quite loud. So let's get started. Okay, so we've got the letters D and U coming out. They could be this person's initials or they could be places or words to do with this person. What's interesting is you've got a lot of symbols like this, like the angel wing, and then you've got this fairy who brings blessings here. So I do think for many reasons, like you have saved this person or they have saved you in some way. There's been this kind of mutual... Um, life improvement as a result of having each other in in each other's lives and there is that strong love there like i said it really does feel like this person cares about you but sometimes they just are their own worst enemy i feel i think sometimes you almost are like a a parent figure to this person because they seem to be less emotionally mature than you or less able to kind of see through what the probable consequences of their actions would be than you do and maybe that leads to disagreements sometimes if you tell them well this won't work out and then you you know they they push back on that um so that's what i see coming up for a lot of you as well just the general dynamics of the relationship you have got a sword there as well so like i said you know this person not afraid to stick up for themselves i think there's been some quite clear-cut communication um, throughout this relationship as well like this person in no uncertain terms telling you that they're annoyed with you or you know they they don't want you to treat them like that or whatever that's just what I get from this person is they're not afraid to to speak they're not someone who holds back necessarily when they talk about how they're feeling and I think you influence each other a lot as well because we've got that following charm with the footprints possibly you're still checking up on them on social media as well if you have kind of stopped speaking physically, you know, you might still be, be checking out each other's social media to see how the other one is. There's strong creative energy for a lot of you. And I think as well, it's important that this relationship has more balance because it seems like this person takes charge a lot of the time and let their, their issues or what they're going through seems to be more important than what you're going through or seems to take precedence all the time. So I think it's important that you redress that balance in this relationship things need to change you know we've got that frog there which is about being adaptable um because i think in many ways you felt lonely in this relationship you felt as though when you meet up to talk to this friend like the conversation is mainly about what they're going through and they're quickly able to turn topics of conversation into something to do with themselves so i think that's something that needs to be changed or talked about you've got the wish charm there so you might just want to pause the video and make a wish while you look at that charm and we've got the conch shell so this is associated with like poseidon neptune triton um i believe vishnu as well there might be other um deities that it's associated with but those are the ones that come to mind so that any of those could be 
patron gods for you or just helping you in this situation. I do feel as well that you are going to overcome this. As I've said before, the lobster is this sense of resilience and getting through the difficult times. And then we also have the happy face. So you do make each other happy. You make each other smile. You make each other laugh. Like I said, I think you've helped each other through the tough times as well. Um, so there's definitely this strong foundation to the relationship, but it feels like maybe sometimes the dynamics aren't very healthy because this person demands more attention or tries to take charge of the conversation or things like that. So that's just maybe something to think about as you move forward here. So let's get your dice on top as well, group two. Okay, number three, that's the same set of dice that we rolled for group one. And they look like this. And we're also rolling four, which I believe is the number that we rolled for group one as well. That's interesting. Okay, group two. Uh -huh. So yeah, we've got the, the microscope, which is all about overanalyzing a situation. I think this person, I would even go so far as to say it's a little bit paranoid because they seem to be someone who overanalyzes their interactions with other people. They seem to be someone who really stresses about what other people think about them or what people have said about them. So that could cause issues here. And I think as well, they're kind of the person to bring up old messages or old phone conversations or whatever as like a stick to beat you with. Like there's someone who who understands the importance of remembering what people have said. And I think this person's gonna come back into your life. As I said, I don't think this rough patch or this falling out or this disagreement or this no contact is gonna go on forever. I think this is a relationship that's gonna last a long time in your life. And I really feel at the moment, this dice is about two people kind of pretending to ignore each other. Um, it's like a spy kind of thing. But I, I honestly think that's what's happening. I think both of you, if you have stopped speaking, are still kind of hearing about them from other people or you're looking at each other's social media while pretending that you don't care, you know? And that's just the energy I get from this person in general is that, like I said, they can be their own worst enemy. You know, they can just pretend that they don't care when in fact they do, or they, they pretend that they're never gonna have anything to do with someone again, and then they really, really miss them and they regret it, but their pride stops them from reaching out. But I do think that this this relationship is gonna get back onto an even keel, um, and that maybe you should pay more attention going forward to the way that this relationship plays out, like how much they demonate the conversation, or how much the relationship is you going along with things that they want to do rather than it being equal, um, just to redress the balance a little bit. But definitely there's a lot of love and care there. There's a lot of affection um, that this person has for you. They really do care about you. But like I said, own worst enemy is just what I'm gonna repeat about this person. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this group too. I hope it was helpful and that it resonated with you. Please do like this video if you enjoyed it comment below, let me know how it resonated and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because all of those things really help out my channel and they help my videos get seen by more people. I also do try to reply to all of your comments as well because I just love reading them and I love hearing about what's going on for you. Um, and yeah, feel free to suggest readings below if you'd like um, me to do a particular reading. If you have a good idea, let me know. And if you want to help help out the channel or show your support in another way, I have loads of links in the description box to help you do that. So you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram or on Billy Billy if that interests you. You can become a patron on my Patreon page and get access to exclusive content and get to know me a little bit better and get monthly rewards in return for supporting the channel. Uh, you can also donate via PayPal that's where I get little tips and donations from you guys to help me keep making these videos. And also through my Amazon wish list, because I have a wish list for new decks, new tarot and oracle decks that you might find interesting. So if you're feeling really generous and you want to get a new deck for the channel, definitely check that out. 
Thank you to everyone who's donated in whatever way you can, because it really does mean a lot to me. And I am still offering angel healing sessions over on Etsy. If that interests you, definitely go and check that out. All of these things are linked in the description. But have a lovely rest of your day, group two, and I wish you all the best with this relationship moving forward. And I'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Take care. Hi there group three, if you chose the person sitting in this starry forest and the happy tarot, then this is going to be your reading. So let's take a look and see what the cards have to say. I've been surprised by the previous two groups because they were really specific actually about like the friendship dynamics and what that person was like. So I'm curious to see if this group is going to be the same. Okay, group three. Okay, there's a load of cards that jumped out there. So, we've got the Page of Swords, first of all. Then the Four of Pentacles. The Hierophant. Ace of Swords. Ten of Swords. Eight of Wands. The Magician, Queen of Wands, and Queen of Swords. Okay, so lots of Swords cards. Um, I am seeing Taurus, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, um, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius coming through here. So lots, lots of um, Zodiac signs. But what I'm picking up mainly is that this person seems to be a little bit difficult to get along with sometimes. And I think it's because they are someone who is very blunt and... Also, they seem to not be the most empathetic person. And, you know, some people are just like that. They can't help it. But I think from the outside, it can come across as rude because this person, sometimes they just say what they think or they, you know, they just talk and they don't seem to really be paying much attention to the feelings of others or they seem to be very self-centered. I think some of you would describe this person as selfish as well, even. Um, but this person is just you know, like that. I don't think they're trying to do it to be nasty because I'm not seeing any cards here that would make me think that this person was deliberately mean or cruel or unkind or anything like that. I think it's just the way that they are. And I think in a sense, they can also be a little bit attention seeky. I think some of you have maybe had issues with this person in the past where they've kind of flirted with someone that you were interested in or someone that you were going out with. Um, you know, there's maybe a little bit of issues surrounding boundaries there because this person seems to put themselves first all the time and not think about how their actions might affect other people, even people that they supposedly really care about. And I think as well, this person can be very intense. That's another energy that I'm getting is that this person can sometimes be pretty overwhelming, I would say. So that's something to bear in mind as well but like I said I think it's I think it's their personality I don't think it's them being deliberately mean I think it's just who they are okay then we have beauty's truth number 32 beauty physical pleasure sensuality and number 17, Acorn's Invitation, Touch, Exchange, Connection. And that's what I was talking about before, that they may overstep the mark sometimes with partners of their friends. You know, they might be very flirtatious or kind of flaunting themselves in a sense in front of people that you have a crush on or people that you are actually dating, um, etc. And I think as well, this person might be overly touchy feely in general. And in that sense, lacks boundaries, because they might come up and like hug you when you don't actually like that, or they might just be very touchy, um, like tactile, and you just aren't that kind of person, or it oversteps what you would consider to be appropriate. You know, this person, in many ways, seems not to have matured very much. And that may as I said, just be their personality. It may be caused by some underlying issue as well, um, like mental health problems or issues from their past. But that seems to just be who this person is. OK, 
Okay, then we have number 34, Voyage. You already have all the answers. And six, Dragons, Slay Them All. Yeah, I, I honestly feel like this person has had bullying in the past or they've been made to feel like they weren't good enough. And so in order to try and overcome that, they're like really honest, really open, even to the point of being rude. They like show themselves to be someone who is just very open, I think in many ways as well. The tactile thing or the flirtatious thing is because they want people to like them. Um, that's what I've, I'm getting from this person. And so they're seeking validation outside of themselves, which is their issue. As I've said before, this is 100% not to do with you. It's their own problem. Vulture spirit. Number 63, nothing is wasted. And that's what I, I feel from this as well, is that this person can seem very overwhelming or when they come to like a social event, they seem to just dominate the conversation. Maybe they have a very loud voice or they have like a very, very visible manner of speaking. Like they gesticulate a lot or they, you know, move their arms around a lot or they reach over to get other people to join in the conversation and so they kind of dominate in that sense which just seems overwhelming um, or rude as I want to say again then we have lord god masculine so either this person is a very masculine energy or they kind of crave that that validation from the masculine energy. Then we have Gentle Gardener in the reverse, number two. That's something that I'm gonna have to read from the guidebook. I don't think I've pulled that in the reverse before. And also second chakra, Archangel Ariel, number 36, has come out in the reverse. And we had this in one of the other readings and it came out the right way up. So I'm intrigued to read from the guidebooks here. Gentle Gardener, first of all. Okay, so this says, do you harbor resentment? How often do you reinforce negativity by affirming lack and limitation? Every time you send out a desire for something but secretly harbour a belief that you're undeserving of it, you plant weeds in the field of your dreams. When the gentle gardener appears in the reverse position, she reminds you to be aware of any negative thoughts or selfish motives. She encourages you to step back and pay close attention to what thought seeds you send out into the world. Weeds choke the life out of your beautiful garden. So yeah, I feel like there is resentment in this relationship, possibly from your side based on the way this person behaves or things that they've done in the past, um, but possibly from their side as well if they feel like you haven't been there for them or you haven't understood them or something like that. Um, but I definitely sense this person is very insecure, possibly as a result, as I've said, of mental health problems or past experiences have led them to be like this. Um, it's just who they are. And then this card in the reverse says that your creativity may be being blocked. If this is the case, you might need to take more risks and open up to new and different ideas. Go inward to find the feelings that may be causing this blockage. Affirm that you are open to spirits, love and creative inspiration. And what I think is more important is what I'm just going to read now. This card also signifies problems with intimacy of all kinds and issues of sexual in intimacy in particular. Visualize Ariel spinning a beautiful light in your second chakra, that's the sacral chakra, calming and healing the energy there. Know that real closeness can be both safe and comfortable for you and that you deserve a depth of sharing in your relationships. So yeah, this person kind of self-sabotage is what I want to say for some of you. Like they seem to go for people who are unavailable romantically you know they might go for people who are cruel or they go for people who are already in a relationship because from some level they're self-sabotaging they don't feel worthy of happiness so they choose to try and wreck other people's happiness instead so while I don't want to make any judgments and say that this person's being deliberately malicious um, at the same time you might want to pull back from their energy 
because if they're behaving in a way that is toxic, it can also affect you. You know, they could block your sacral chakra by behaving in this way, by trying to force closeness with friends really quickly or force intimacy in like a tactile sense, like always holding people's hands or always hugging when they don't want that. You know, that can cause issues for you as well. And I do get the feeling that a lot of you probably walk away from this person feeling very drained, which again is not a good sign after spending time with someone. Okay, so then we have two archetype cards to describe this person. Number one is Gambler, and Light Attribute says, willingness to follow intuition even when others doubt you. Shadow Attribute is relying on luck rather than hard work. And then we have Rebel. Light Attributes challenges authority to affect social change, rejects spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. Shadow Attributes rejects legitimate authority out of anger, rebels out of peer pressure or fashion. So any of those could fit this person. You know, you don't have to take both sides of one card. If just one bit seems to resonate with you, that's fine. Um, but that's what I'm, I'm getting about this person. I feel like they're quite easily influenced by others as well. They might very easily find themselves in toxic relationships, which then creates problems, not just for them, because I think there's someone who really relies on other people to support them or to get them through tough times like they really emotionally need other people to kind of talk to then we have der schatten number 23 the shadow so yeah this person definitely has a lot of shadow self attributes and that might be why they've come into your life is to teach you about your own shadow side and what you can do um, to improve it you've got 23 there that's number 23 and here you've got 32 so those two numbers could be important to you chop wood number 42 yeah I do think this person brings your energy down in many ways and again this the point of this reading is not to tell you to stop being friends with someone or to tell you you know what you should or shouldn't be doing but I do think that this is one of those relationships where you really need to take a step back and just ask yourself you know what am I getting from this or am I getting the same amount as I'm putting out um you know am I feeling supported and lifted up by this person am I feeling energized when I've walked away from this person or am I feeling drained tired anxious worried sad etc I've also noticed as well this is number 36 and this is number 63 so you're getting a lot of these kind of mirror mirror numbers yeah so Group three, I'm going to put your charms on top now, but just before I start shuffling, if you don't like the sound of the charms or if you have really high volume, you might just want to turn it down while I do the shuffling because I know a lot of you don't like how it sounds and it can be quite loud. Um, so I just try to remember to give you that little two second warning. So group three, is this person a true friend? And I'm really interested by just how how detailed <laughs> these readings have been. So you've got the letter Y there, which could be related to this person's name or surname or a place that you know them from or maybe just a word to do with them. And you also have the black W. Now you can take that as a W if you want, um, but because it's the only one that I have that's a different color, I have all of the alphabet in blue and all of the alphabet in pink. And then I got this one like, as an extra, like a free thing, um, I take this to mean make a wish. So if you want to do that, you can do it. You can pause the video and you can just make a wish while looking at this W. Um, it doesn't have to be about this relationship. It could just be a separate thing, um, but you can choose to do that if you want to. 
I think for some of you, you are this person's best friend. And I think that's important because I don't think for many of you that this person is your best friend. I think that you are their best friend or they see you as their best friend or they want you to be your, their best friend. Um, that's what's coming out. Yeah, energy vampire. Look at it right there, especially on that card about the sacral chakra. This is someone who drains you. Um, whether they mean to do that or not, it's just what they do. There is this toxic person charm there. And I think in many ways as well, this person hasn't really matured. Like I was saying before, they can be very immature or very irresponsible, or they just seem emotionally to not react to things in the way that someone who is mature and sensible would react. Um, there could be a connection to England, the UK, or France here. And that might not mean that this person is from that country, but they might have a first name or a surname from that country, or they might be able to speak, you know, French or something like that. Winter is important for this connection for some of you. And it seems like a milestone date is coming up, like whether they want to be invited to Christmas at your house or something, or and that's how it ties in, or like their birthday is coming up, or some other big important event for the two of you is coming up. Um, but that seems to be important for some of you. It will be best to try and slow things down with this relationship, I think. Because like I said, I think this person tries to force closeness very early on in relationships. As soon as they meet someone, they might start referring to them as their best friend or like a good friend or something. Um, and yeah, I think that that can be very overwhelming and it can be very um, just too much sometimes. It's important that you have more stability, more security in your life, because I think this situation has been causing you anxiety for a while, and it's only now that you're fully starting to look at it, or you're fully starting to see all of the little things that have contributed to you feeling this way. We've got the worry thread there. We've also got the snake, so this person could be born in the year of the snake. And like I said, I don't think they're necessarily doing this to be, to be toxic. I don't think they even realize that that's what they're doing. Um, it's just who they are. Then we have property of Davy Jones, which is the reverse of the treasure map. So I think this person can be a very possessive friend. They can be very possessive in other relationships as well, like romantic or family relationships. Then there's two hearts linked together and also the happy couple. So again, I'm wondering if they have a tendency to interfere in the romantic relationships of others or if they just seem to try and push um, romantic relationships just as quickly as friendship ones, or maybe they've even told you that they like you in a way that's not necessarily just friendly, you know, and that's related to some of you. And then we've got the lantern as well. So I do think you'll find a way through this difficult period. I do think you'll be able to, to find safe ground out of this, whether you want to continue being their friend or start to, you know, step back and look at them from a distance more. If you want to completely just make a break, a clean break from this relationship, it's up to you. But I think that you're going to find the solution that's right for you. So let's get your dice on top to finish up group three. Okay, the fourth set of dice, that's the Looney Tunes dice these ones. And we're rolling seven of them for you today. Okay. Group three. Okay, so we've got the creativity symbol coming out there again, which is interesting. This person might work in a creative job because it's curious that that's come out um, more than once here. Then we have Wiley Coyote and Elma Fudd. So when either of these people come out, I think that this person thinks of themselves as like a bit of a loser or someone who just never seems to win, you know, someone who always seems to do badly or to fail or whatever. Um, and I think they kind of put you on a pedestal in a way. You've got Tweety there. You've got this person who is idolized or seen as, 
really smart or really pretty or really intelligent or whatever. Um, and so I think that they often kind of compare themselves to you and they think that by being around you or by associating themselves with you that they are somehow more cool or more attractive or more successful or something like that. So just be aware of that, that this person may in fact be consciously or subconsciously using their association with you to make themselves feel better. I do think that if you were to say to this person that you don't want to be their friend anymore, that they would turn on the waterworks, like emotionally, they would be very distressed, they would be very upset. I think there's someone who would go around telling people that you had, you know, done something really mean to them, etc. There's someone who likes to catastrophize and there's someone who really, um, really exaggerates situations emotionally for support from others. But I think you've already sensed even before this reading that things weren't quite right. When I get the cheese, I think like something stinks, there's something to be suspicious about here or there's something that's a little bit off and you've been wound and wound by this person for so long that you're almost ready to blow now you know you've got this energy of like I'm not sure I can take this anymore from this person or I'm not sure I can put up with that behavior anymore from someone who's meant to be a friend so I do think this is something that's been on your mind even if it's just been a subconscious feeling like it's been in the back of your mind for a very long time um, about whether or not this person is a good person to be around. So again, like I said, the purpose of this reading is not to tell you what to do, it's just to give you more of an overview, more of a holistic viewpoint of what this relationship is, what this person is like, etc., um, to help you come to your own conclusions. So I hope it has been helpful for you, group three. Um, please do let me know in the comments what you're going through or how this resonated with you. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because all of those things really do help my videos to get seen by more people. So they do help out the channel. And I do love replying to your comments as well. I do try to reply to all of you. And if you'd like to help out the channel in another way or just show your support for me, that would be lovely. You can go ahead and follow me on Instagram or Billy Billy. If you'd like to do that, the links to all of these things are in the description box. You can become a patron on my Patreon page and get access to exclusive content and monthly rewards and also get to know me a little bit better. You can make donations via my PayPal link or my tarot and oracle wish list over on Amazon if you'd like to get a new deck for the channel. Definitely go and check that out because I've got a lot of really different decks on there. They're not all like for similar themes or artwork or anything like that. They're all quite varied. Um, and thank you obviously to everyone who has donated. It really means a lot to me and actually a lot of the decks that you see here have been donated by by viewers and clients so thank you so much to all of you for that because we've got some really gorgeous decks as a result of that um, and of course I am still offering angel healing sessions over on my Etsy page if that interests you definitely go and check it out um, there's a couple of other things on there but it is mainly the healing sessions that I'm offering at the moment so yeah thank you so much for watching group three I wish you all the best with this relationship and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day um, and yeah, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care.